These seven sections, which you completed, provided a comprehensive overview of stress and how stress can affect your mental and physical health and things that you can do, behaviors and techniques to reduce the effect of stress on your mental and physical health. Remember, stress is not going to go away. What we can do to increase our ability to manage and reduce the effects of stress on health is to change the way our brains respond to stress. What I'm going to do in this section is to give you my guidelines for a long and healthy life. Some of it will be a summary of what I've given you, but there will be new information that I haven't had the opportunity to talk about with you. First of all, children should grow up in a socially stable society, having role models that use healthy lifestyle behaviors. And I've said this a number of times, children don't know right from wrong. They don't know what healthy behaviors are. They learn from those they love. If the important adults in a child's life use healthy behaviors, it is more likely that the child will grow up using these behaviors. They need to be in an environment where the adults are talking to each other, where there is no intimate partner violence, where the adults are not yelling at each other, hitting each other, putting each other down. The children should not be yelled at. The children must not be abused. They must not be hit. They must not be told they are stupid. They must not be told there is something wrong with them. They must not be sexually abused. Children need to know that they are safe and they are cared about. They need to grow up in a socially stable society having role models that use healthy lifestyle behaviors. If we're not going to do this, we are going to have a coming generation that is essentially no different in regard to mental and physical health than our current generation, possibly less mentally and physically healthy than we are. Let's be realistic. We're all going to die. Everybody listening to this is going to die at some point. And what you want to do is make sure that when you're gone, there is a better society left. And the only way you can do that is to make sure that the individuals who comprise that society, the young children now who will become adults, are mentally and physically healthy when they become adults. And that begins now. When does healthy living begin? It begins when one is a fetus because when a pregnant woman experiences a lot of stress during pregnancy, that can have an effect on the child and affect the child's long-term mental and physical health. Healthy living begins in the womb and it's important for pregnant women to be in an environment where they can be calm, they are well fed, they are socially interactive, they are physically active, they are happy. Healthy living, healthy lifestyle begins during pregnancy. And then we've got to talk about and deal with the issue of abuse and bullying. And these are things which must be reduced. The only way to get a healthier population is to have children who grow up healthy. I talked to you about the importance of social interaction, not being lonely, the importance of being part of a social network, having friends where you have others to talk about personal issues and with whom you engage in pleasurable activities so your life is meaningful and interesting with goals can, that can be accomplished. 
there's a sex difference here. Women have friends. Women have people they can talk to about personal things. Men, often when they try to talk about something personal with another male, the male isn't interested. They just say, well, what do you think about some sports team? Women have friends and they are at an, at an advantage there. It's important to be able to talk about personal things with someone when you need to, without being put down, without being told, well, that's meaningless. You know, I don't know why that's bothering you. We need friends. And more than a single type of friend, for example, family, we need friends in different types of social settings. Family, work, place of worship, book club, sporting activity. We need friends in different types of social types of contexts. Remember that if one is alone and not lonely, that's okay. The issue is loneliness. But please also remember that you can be with people and still feel lonely. And if you're lonely, when you're under stress, you're gonna have more of a reaction to the stressor than if you are not lonely. You are never too old and it's never too late to increase your social inter interactions. And the returns can be significant in terms of quality and quantity of life. And it's easy to say this, but it's very hard to get people who have had a lifestyle where they've not been socially interactive and are getting older to suddenly start engaging in social interactions. Regardless, it's important to keep trying. It's important to have groups in neighborhoods. It's important to have groups that meet at, at, at religious organizations. It's important to reach out to people, not so much as a charity. You know, there's something wrong with you and we're gonna provide something for you, but something that meets someone's interest. For example, if someone likes gardening, wouldn't it be wonderful if they volunteered at the local botanical garden or if somebody likes reading, wouldn't it be great to read to children at a public library or be a mentor for children in school, to go to a hospital and volunteer at a hospital where you're gonna be interacting with other volunteers and meeting people. There are many things that people can do to increase their social interaction through volunteer activities. And these are extremely beneficial and helpful. Loneliness, I keep talking about this because it's so important. Loneliness and the absence of friends can be stressful and unhealthy unless you want to be that way, unless you are seeking solitude, unless you don't want to be with people and you're content with that lifestyle. Remember, if you are alone and not lonely, it is okay. But also remember, as I just said, if you are with people and lonely, and there are many people who are interacting with people but are still lonely, you will be more reactive to stress. It's important not to be critical of other people, to avoid arguing with people simply for the sake of arguing because you're always trying to get things your own way. The, the kinder, the nicer, the more positive, the more smiling, uh, the, the enjoyment of people is important. You don't always have to get things your own way. And this is health enhancing. If you can say, gosh, you know, I was interacting with somebody and, uh, we had a disagreement, but I saw their way. I didn't just insist uh, that it had to be my way. Be kind. The word is kind. It's important to be sat satisfied with your career. Your career, what you do in the workplace, is important. 
if you work very hard and put in a lot of time and you're happy with what you do and you enjoy what you do, the effects on your health are going to be a lot less negative than if you put a lot of time into your career, your job, and you hate it. You don't like it. There are more health problems associated with being in a work environment and unhappy than being in a work environment and being happy. Now, the work environment depends on a lot of things. It depends on the supervisors. It depends on whether what you're doing is something that you enjoy. It depends on what we call the built environment, the, the size of the facility you're in, how noisy it is, how quiet it is, how well lit it is, the colors that are there, uh, the built environment. If you're in an environment that you enjoy being in, that is less stressful than when you're in an environment that you don't like. It's dark, it's gloomy, it's noisy. Uh, my bosses are terrible. In the work environment, everybody wants to feel that they are respected. And it's important when decisions have to be made to, to engage people that who will be affected by those decisions in the decision making process. You don't want to just be somebody who comes to work and is dictated to, told what to do, and you say to yourself, you know, I've got a better idea, but nobody cares about it. You keep going to work and feel that nobody cares about you and nobody cares about what you have to offer. That increases the risk of health problems. Then there's the marital status. You want to be happily married, so that's very easy. You don't have to be married, though, if you have a social network. And this primarily applies to women, because as I said, women have friends. Women have people to talk to. Women can talk about personal things with other women. Men generally don't talk about personal things with other men. Men who are married and happily married have longer, healthier lives than men who are never married. Men who are married and divorced are somewhere in between. Women, generally, if they are married or unmarried, uh, the quality of life and the health of, uh, of the individual throughout life is not markedly affected by whether or not they are married. Being married, being in a good marriage, having kids that you enjoy, are important. But if you're not married and you have a social network that you enjoy and you have people that you can talk to and you enjoy being with, that can buffer out the negative effects of not being married. Thoughtful planning for the future with a sense of control and accomplishment. You want to know what you're going to do. You want to know what you're going to be doing. You want to participate in what you're going to be doing. You don't want to be in a situation where you're, let's say, in a job, uh, you have a, a place of employment, and somebody makes decisions about what you're going to be doing, uh, what you should be doing, but that's, you say, well, that's not what I want to do. You want to be able to participate in what you are doing, what you're going to be doing, not just in your job, but in your personal life, in your family life. You want to be conscientious. You want to think about what you want to do. If you're looking for a job, you want a job where you enjoy what you're doing. You may have to take a job where you're going to just, just get a job for the sake of getting a job, but you're going to be happier if it's a job where you're doing what you want to be doing. You need a sense of control. And also, you need to feel an accomplishment, whatever you're doing, whether it's a hobby, whether it's raising children, whether it's in the work environment, whether it's in the academic environment. You want to be able at the end to say, I did well. You know, I really got something out of that, but so did they. I provided something that was beneficial to the group, the people, the, the place of employment, whatever that you were interacting with. It's a two-way street. You want them to benefit and you want to benefit. And I'm restating this again because it's very important. You want to be conscientious by striving to keep your life organized 
and productive. You don't want things to be out of control. And the reality is there's times when you when you can't do this, but it should be your goal. And you should try as often as possible to keep your life organized, not chaotic and productive. So you can say, you know, I mattered. I did something meaningful. And what I have done here is to put everything that was on the previous slides onto one slide. If you want to just review, if there's something you want to think about, so you can just you know keep this uh, and look at it uh, as long as you want. And let's now go to the last slide. And thank you. We've gone through an educational program by uh, teaching you about things you can do to reduce the effect of stress on mental and physical health and by encouraging you to be a role, a meaningful role model for people that you love and who love you. Now, if there's any questions, please email me. It's real simple, bsr at pit.edu. Any questions on any of this? You can share this with anybody you want. Uh, I hope it's helpful. And what is the goal? The goal is to keep people healthy as we go through the aging process. So again, thank you and everybody be well.